the symptoms that I got that, I, that led me up to thinking that something was wrong. Um, I used to, I had a little lump at the side of the neck and it got bigger and bigger. Sharon made the appointment for me to go to the doctors and that was about the only sign. I, there were other signs, but I didn't know they were signs at the time. I was being told on 11.30 on Friday the 13th of May that I was, I'd was i got cancer. Without Sharon, I wouldn't be here today. I generally can say that I would not have got through my cancer and I wouldn't be a survivor today without Sharon. Suddenly being plunged into being a carer kind of happens immediately, especially with Chris, with him switching off, I suddenly had to pick up everything sorting out transport for his appointments, making sure his, the food was ordered because he was peg fed, so it's a liquid food they have to have. And then obviously when he came out of surgery, having to look after um, the wounds that he had and also things like cleaning the peg and what have you all need to be looked after. And I just did it to start with and then people start saying you're a carer. And, you know, it's my husband, you have to do it. We've gone from two full-time wages down to one you still want to provide for the children, so they've got school trips coming up, going out with friends, you're still trying to supply money for that. That was the hardest bit of being a carer. A typical day, the ones that stick out are probably when he's being peg fed, so we would go to bed at night and we would attach Chris to a feed that sits at the side of the bed and we would go to sleep and probably about three in the morning you'd be woken to, oh, it's, it's broke, and basically the feed comes off the peg but the feed continues to pump into the bed. So suddenly you're waking up to a soaking wet, stinking bed, because it's like a thick strawberry milkshake. You come down in the morning, you sort the kids out, you take the kids to school, you go to work, you come home, Chris is sat in the same seat, he's not put the washing out, he's not put a wash in, he's down in the dumps, um, he's needing another feed. I think help from people is, is great, as long as it's what, you know, what is gonna help you. Things like being an ear to, to listen to you is really helpful because you just need to get this stress off you sometimes. You know, sometimes it, it would be nice to have a meal cooked, you know, just turn up with a lasagna at the door or something like that. It just, just takes that little bit of pressure off you having to do those extra things. So during my cancer experience, um, early doors, I felt that I needed to talk to someone that had been there and wore the t-shirt. When we started the Swallows, um, it was really about the patient needing to talk to another patient. But it made me start thinking that carers need to talk. You know, when I looked back over my journey, it was that frustration that I didn't talk to anybody about anything. So I got more on board with you, didn't I? And then we decided that at these meetings we have patients and we have carers but we need to separate them because they need to be able to talk openly about their feelings or what they're going through. It's all talking about survivorship and giving people that hope and that's what The Swallows is all about, is giving people the hope that they can beat the cancer. Merck through its Embracing Carers initiative is asking for your support to help carers and you could help them by picking up their prescriptions, you could take their children to the park, you can drop their kids off at football. Carers would appreciate any time you can give them, so join Time Counts 